fuck a dog with me Man, I'm telling you, you don't wanna miss it Daddy, you're not to dog with me It's gonna be funny, different celebrities Oh, you're gonna love it Even people form and singing all kind of everything And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, I say welcome. Your boy is back. It's been a long time. I would like to welcome everybody back officially to CT After Dark. Those of you guys who've been rocking with me for a minute know that uh, Facebook had uh, threw your boy on punishment. You understand me? told me I couldn't go live for a month, demonetize the page, which is still happening. So if you are out there, if you know someone who works at Facebook, message me, uh, DM me on Instagram, get you a faster response. Other than that, uh, I am ready to get it in. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Fire Rabbit, Invisible Vamp. What's up? Where'd you go? There you go, Rabbit. I see you. What's up, CJ? Evelyn, look at all of this. What's good, everybody? I see you. What's up, see Takiri? What's going on, everybody? I'm happy to see everybody. Harrisburg in the building. What city you watching me from? Where you at in the world? Where you at in the country? Tell me, my guy Kyle Daniel, my man. Hope you well, brother. Um, <laughs> you really live right now, or am I late? Uh, hopefully that answers your question, brother. Uh, what's up, Isaac Woodruff, Bobby, everybody that's coming in here. First of all, thank you for being here. I'm starting to see the cities. Let me shout y'all out. I see Miami in the building. I see New York. I see Mississippi. What's up, Mississippi? Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my guy, Ken Edwin. You're in Detroit right now, my hometown. I love it. Indiana. NYC, South Dakota. I don't think I know anybody. And so I didn't even know that people that I thought it was fiction. I didn't know if it was a real place, but I'm seeing that it is truly uh, a place that people are uh, inhabiting. You understand? Or inhabiting? Inhabitate? Inhabiting. I think I'm going to go with inhabiting. East Side. I'm a West Side guy. Big beard. I'm going to call you that, TJ Black. Um, first and foremost, Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you do not know what this show is, allow me to tell you what this show is. This is CT After Dark during the day. This is a daytime talk where I get a chance to talk to a lot of my different friends of notoriety and show them love and give them their flowers right here and get to know a little bit more about them. And you guys who uh, might know them, some who might not get a chance to be introduced to them as we are here today. So a couple ground rules. Number one ground rule, respect my guests, respect the guests, respect my show. I would love to show some of you guys' comments on the screen. My guy Felix is going to be running the comments for me today. So make sure you don't curse in your comments so we can put them up on the screen. You know, Felix, show me a couple. We got Virginia. Uh, okay. Oregon. I see you. Hilton Head Island. That, that sounds like, uh, a made up place, but brother, I'm showing love. Lisa, Texas. Okay. I like that. London. 
London town. I love London. That's the place that I'm going to end up retiring. I love London. DC. Okay. Show me some more Felix. Belize. Okay. I love it. I love it. Girl, if you know what I mean, what are you talking about? Can I? anyway, uh, we got Perry, Georgia, we got Pensacola, South Florida, Monroe, Hilton Head is beautiful. <laughs> I bet it is. But um, my mom was watching. Let me stop. Anyway, I brought this show back because not only did I miss you guys, but the fact that my mama said, When is CT After Dark coming back? And I say, Mama, you know, I already do a different show. And those of you guys who don't know, on my Patreon. Every Friday, it goes down at 8 p.m. Uh, I record a private conversation about grown folks talk on my Patreon, and that's exclusively for the Patreon members. I don't share it anywhere else. So if you would like to uh, see that conversation, the real CT After Dark every Friday airs at nighttime. Uh, just go to my Patreon and show love that way. But in the meantime, I... And running through these comments, I want to say what's up to a couple more people. Uh, Circleville or Circeville, nice. Uh, South Carolina, facts, I love it. Fort Worth, Texas, I see you. Monty is me. What's up, Vamp? I see you, Monty. I'm um, listening to, that's what's up, okay? I don't know what that means. So the question of the day, I got to start you guys out with this. Question of the day, how much is too much arguing? When do you know it's time to end the relationship? Tell me in the comments, how much is too much arguing? When is it time to end the relationship? Tell me in the comments. I want to read what your thoughts are. Uh, how much is too much arguing and when is it time to end the relationship? Talk to me. Talk to me. I want to know. Hold on. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Do y'all know y'all free? I don't know if y'all know y'all free down there yet. Uh, Philly. I love Philly. When you tired of arguing, mm, doesn't when the arguing doesn't result in change. I love it. Okay. When there is no, you got to, you got to type in complete sentences, baby. I don't understand. Uh, let's see. Evelyn says, when you don't have any inner peace, when you don't have anything to argue about and you're just tired of being tired. I like that, Evelyn. Uh, Oof, when there is no compromise. Ah, I like that you finished that sentence. Let me give you a shout out for that. And <laughs> that's real. When you hate going home. Oh my goodness. I'll let you boy. When you don't, I'm imagining you're trying to say when you don't see a future with the other. Okay. When a person cheats on, let me tell you something, Christopher. Uh, brother, you might as well go ahead and hang up any relationship. If you go in a relationship after getting cheated on, brother, I ain't saying a thousand times, then don't end it. But if you're going to end a relationship after getting cheated on once, brother, you don't, you're not prepared for a real relationship, real relationships, boy, stuff goes up and down. And as many times as men end up cheating for a woman to accept and forgive, if you can't forgive getting cheated on, you're not ready to be in a relationship. If that's your deal breaker, <laughs> I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, I've not said I've been cheated on in this relationship, but I have had relationships where I got cheated on. And I had done a lot of cheating. It's like if I didn't smash 20 girls, how am I going to trip on her for smashing one guy? <laughs> when you start watching the forensic channel, fam, that's hilarious. And that lets me know that you have contemplating ending somebody's life. How much is too much arguing? When is the time to end the relationship? When sex doesn't make the argument end, all the love is gone. Wow. That's crazy. Autumn Reed says, Autumn Reed. Uh, if the little things begin to turn into arguments and you're no longer care to work it out, mm, that's sound advice. All my single people in the chat, talk to me. I'm thinking about bringing love, lust, and lies back on Wednesdays where we have conversations about relationships and dating. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are in the comments. I would love to you know, develop that whole thing. I got my Twitch people in here. I got YouTube folks in here. YouTube, when the argument doesn't bother you enough to change things. Wow. You just dropped some bars, SG. When the argument doesn't bother you enough to change things. Whenever it gets physical and you wake up sore, first and foremost. <laughs> first and foremost, this is a good buddy, Reggie, from my Twitch channel. He and his wife are down in Texas. Shout out to you, brother. I actually just messaged, I think, you and your wife. I would love for you guys to be guests 
on the real CT of the Dark tonight on the Patreon. Message me back. Let me know what you guys think. Um, you go through good with bad and make it work. Van Beard, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, if you did not see the CT singing showcase this past uh, Sunday, Van Beard came in there and he came to play. He's an amazing singer. His son is an amazing artist, uh, rap and sings uh, Southern Riz. You guys got to check him out. Meanwhile, right now we are about to get into my first guest of the day. This brother needs no introduction actually he does need an introduction because i threw this little package together i want to show y'all a little something just just to give you just a little bit three strikes fat beach eve beloved didn't even know he was in that one i let your boy austin powers the spy who shed the luau you're talking about laughing to the bank you're talking about 75 ladies and gentlemen without further ado this man has been in the trenches longer than the trenches been trenches. This brother is getting his flowers today because he is one of the greatest minds in entertainment. This brother has been independent since before it was popular to be independent. When it comes to creating your own way, making your own avenues, this brother can write a book and I actually hope he does. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend here for you today. I'm honored to introduce to you the one and only Brian Hux. How are you, yo, man? Yo, yo, what's good, my man? How you feel, brother? All, all I heard was this man is so old. <laughs> he, he is old. Before they even had cameras, he was making movies by writing on notepads and going like this. I mean, old, old. Nigga. That, that's all I heard. <laughs> I, I know you try to be cool, but that's all I heard. Like, you don't know how old. This nigga. Like, uh. <laughs> Bro, let me tell you, man. First uh, and foremost, the reason that I love that you said that is because you still look 28 years old. So it don't even uh, matter. You can be hey, 78. Brother, you look hey, young as hell. <laughs> I'm trying to Benjamin Button on him, man. I'm man, trying, I'm age trying, of to, I'm trying to freeze that time on him, bro. Ooh, bro, all the reads show I love. They love you, man. Uh, Kyrie, always been a fan of his. Love it. So those are going to continue to pop up as we're doing this, man. But let's just, let me get started, bro. Like, what you've done, like, I've watched all your moves, man. Like, what you've done, I was first introduced to you from watching an episode of The Parkers, and yep. not that it's now, not the Netflix, everybody's seeing it now. I'm talking about when it originally aired and be like, this guy is hilarious. And then Three Strikes, I think, came out that weekend, right, of me right. seeing the episode. Bro, how did this begin for you, man? Man, I, you know, I've been pretty, um, <clears throat> it was like... Uh, you know, a lot a lot of stuff was accidentally on purpose, man. So mm -hmm. I came down here from Bakersfield. I was attending Cal State Northridge CSUN. Um, outside of school, I started running around trying to get my feet wet. Um, mm -hmm. I met a buddy, Barry Bowles, who I produced a lot of my uh, first films with. And he approached me. It was on the heels of um, Fat Beach going off and doing well, which Fat Beach, I got through Drama Log. I submitted myself auditioned like six, seven times. Finally, they gave me the part. And that was the writer, director of, um, and creator of Entourage. And so that had came out in the theaters. It did okay on video. It just changed the game. It, it was mm -hmm. ridiculous. And so when my buddy approached me and he was like, yo, he was in film school. I got this film, man. I gambled. I made $11,000. I just need two, three more thousand dollars. And we went out and made Q the movie, which was absolutely horrible, but it was 90 minutes and it was funny. Mm -hmm. And so Xenon, this little mid-level distributor, knew of the success and the numbers of Fat Beach. So they was like, let's take a gamble. Long mm -hmm. story short, that film we made for about 13 grand went on to make $800,000. And from then, we found a little niche to where we could solicit these mid-level distributors and sort of control our own destiny. And like you were saying, it was a t at a time when it wasn't cool, but from a, a mogul standpoint, you know, 
it, it was extremely lucrative. And then you fast forward to now to where I can make a movie without my eyes closed and I'm not dependent or waiting upon anyone to say, yes, let's make a movie. I just mm-hmm. go and make them. So it was, it was a gift when at the time I was like, okay, I'm tired of doing, you know, three and four or five times the work to get these mm-hmm. films out. But, you know, I, I would, today I would be hurting if I didn't get that, that, that jewel back then, man. And so, you know, we sort of accidentally found this niche and that's been my foundation. And I have honestly love, you know, I've done the fool's gold for 90 million and, and been a part of beloved and, 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 and all these other productions. And I can honestly say, man, when we have, you know, half a million dollars, $200,000 to make these small films, it has been more rewarding and fun mm. um, for people who are there because they the homie or, you know, or, or because they believe in you and you get it finished and it's distributed and it's good. It's more rewarding, man, than the bigger film it has been uh, for me, man. So it's been a blessing. You are somebody <laughs> that is truly a an underground legend because a lot of people know of course all the box office joints the tv shows and a lot of your cult following know all of it like your films the mainstream Mm -hmm. stuff and tv how has the internet begun to change how you've done your business like when it comes to your productions when it comes to everything creative wise has the internet affected that at all it um at, at first it was a it was an awkward shift to where you're trying to figure out okay w- what do you sort of get in and, and how do you fit in and everybody was you know constantly trying to get me to do this and trying to get me to do that and it took a moment which again was sort of accidentally on purpose where I just paused and I was behind the scenes helping a lot of the people who you know you guys enjoy and and I sort of figured I'm like no I got to do what I do right. Mm-hmm. So instead of being swayed by what's happening on the internet and the different things and, 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 and producing and making things for the internet, um, you have to do what you do, right? Mm-hmm, so I had mm-hmm. to stay in my lane because I can't, like, like, like you, you make incredible skits. I, I can't you. really do that. You know what I mean? Like, I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can't do it how you do it. So, so I would be in your lane pretending to know what you know and, and have the whatever, and you know you can argue one is easier, one is harder, but you know you ultimately have to do what you're great at. And when you in your mm-hmm. lane doing what you do, things open up for you. But when you start to like shuffling and pedaling and hopping on one cent, just trying to stay balanced, you know it 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 doesn't work for you. So you have to figure out what you do. And and I make independent films. Yeah, and that's what I do. And that's that's why anyone knows me and that's been my foundation for my well-being my family and like you say those people who like yo that's you know that's the dude 75 or you know or or whatever movie it may be and that's how they know me and i gotta keep feeding that and stay on that lane everything else will happen when Mm. it's supposed to happen you know what i mean man let me first of all i'm so glad you said 75 brother i think 75 might have been it came out 07. I just got to LA and I'm still this massive Brian Hooks fan. And I see this movie and I'm like, yo, he made another one. Like it became like, that's kind of like <laughs> your movies are like sneakers. It's like, oh, he dropped another one. Let me go. So I'm watching 75 and I'm like, all right, cool. This is about to be uh, another classic, funny. I love seeing Brian Hooks. And brother, when I tell you, <laughs> I was blown away because it was so you wrote this movie, you directed this movie, you acted in this movie. It was so incredible. Still stands the test of time because that story is so original. Mm. That's when I had the bug of, okay, like forget everything else that you have set the groundwork for me. Mm. Seeing you create this genre bending film was like, it's official. I have to create my own way now. And mm-hmm. the way you did it was so it made you made it look so easy. What is your process when you're writing a comedy, when you're writing a drama, when you're writing this horror piece? What is your process? Um, I think you have to you have to consider you know the elements that you have to work with, right? Um, but you also don't want to confine yourself so much to where 
the audience will be bored. Mm. So you're super creative. So, you know, a lot of times these executives were making these big films. They're not there because they were super creative. They never stepped on a stage. They've never even wrote anything. They sort of, they graduated. They went in the mail room. They were part of someone who, you know, was a part of a film that did big. And now they're telling, you know, you Clayton, whether your stuff is good or not. So they're not mm -hmm. necessarily um, qualified, but they're in a position. Um, so you, you have to, you have to get out of that space and understand that you're smarter than most people. Like if you could stand mm -hmm. on stage and keep people's attention for five mm -hmm. minutes, let alone an hour, you know, nine times out of 10, that's, there's very few people who can do that. So you have to understand that what you create is, you know, nine times out of 10 beyond what everybody else is gonna create. And you have to trust that. Mm -hmm. So in that, I say, you come up with your own concepts and don't be swayed by the outside noise, that white noise. And once you come up with that concept, you begin to think how you can condense it without losing the essence of it. And mm. then from there, with the equipment available now, the playing field is sort of level. And then on top of that, there's no better time to be independent. This is extremely yeah. independent time. So, you know, you, you have that, you know somebody who wants to direct, you know somebody who wants to produce, you know who's who wants to write, you know somebody who wants to do camera, you know somebody who wants, you know what I mean? You have, so you have all the essence and everything you need to literally mm -hmm. make a movie for free, right? You know yeah. what I mean? We all gonna take a piece of the pie. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What are we gonna get? Nothing. Who's they? Well, I'm good on Sundays and Mondays. That's when we gonna knock it out. So, right, instead of waiting to the ideal time, now you six weeks down the line, six Sunday and Mondays into it to yeah. where nobody's getting paid anything, but we all own a portion of this. Mm -hmm. And then we take that, <clears throat> there's a million outlets now, and you flip it. And so now you guys have made your first film, right? And so now you begin to build on the next one, but it's, it's no longer, you need to wait for anybody to tell you anything, man. The equipment has made it so easy. It's just like, you know, Fruity Loops and, and Reason and all this have made music, you know, to someone who can't read music or even play music. Mm -hmm. If you can tweak buttons, you can make a hit. Um, yeah. With film, you know, you don't have to be this huge scholar and know the ins and outs of camera to go out and make something decent, man. And, and, and I think that's what people need to understand. And like I said, with me, I learned on the job and each mm -hmm. film got better and better and better to where, you know, X years down the line, I turned around and like, yo, I, I know a lot of shit, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know how much it costs to throw somebody through a window. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's not that bad. You know? Once yeah. you find a fool that's willing to do it, it's not that bad, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I say that to say, man, it's just being, you, you come up with a creative idea, man, making sure it's condensed, but not condensed to the point to where someone can enjoy it and going out there and execute it. But it, you can't wait. It's never going to be ideal. It's never mm -hmm. going to be perfect. And people get in their head and they want to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until it's ideal. When we made Q, that, it came out horrible. We mm -hmm. did most things wrong, right? Uh, the movie was no good, but it was funny and it was 90 mm -hmm. minutes. We put it out and made $800,000 from 13 grand. Not because we were brilliant at all, but because we took a shot, Yeah. right? So don't sit around talking about it, planning about it, thinking about it, talk about it some more, meeting about it, meet again about the meeting. Just go mm -hmm. do it. You know what I mean? About the meme. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's you know, yeah, man. It's it's so first of all, man, you're dropping so many gems, and I'm grateful. Um, let's go back. Take me to one of your let's let's talk about Eve for a minute. Let's talk about the sitcom. Mm -hmm. Um, what was that experience like during that time? Like you guys had come out, and this is CW. Now yeah. it's like you know, yeah. um, around that time, 
this was the moment that we didn't even know we were waiting on because it was right, such right. a great show. You know what right, I mean? It's right, like, right, I didn't even right. know I wanted to see right. something so fire. What right. was this time period of your life like? What was the whole experience? It, it was amazing. And what's crazy is now I wish I knew how amazing it was like I do now, you know mm. what I'm saying? Because then I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Like, this <laughs> is like, first of all, it's like we're stealing money. Like I show up here every week, I fart around, and then I get a check at the end of the week. The check always <laughs> comes, always good. It's never been late, not once. Sometimes it comes early. This yep. time, oh my God. It's more than what I was supposed to get. I look around, <laughs> and it's like, no, it's fine because they want to. They ran a rerun. Oh shit! Like it, it was like, <laughs> so, like I'm a country boy and I'm not no Hollywood dude. So yeah. I understood it for what it was. You know, I wasn't like, oh, this is who I am and this is who I deserve and this is what it should be. Like. I was like, oh my God, like one day I'm gonna show up here and this door gonna be locked because we're stealing money, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And, and so it was just so amazing, like the people that came through. So for me, it it wasn't as if, you know, I was this guy and I was on this show. It was like the dude from Vegas feel and I was in here with these people and I was like, I wonder when somebody's going to figure out I really wasn't on the list. <laughs> and I say that to say I was enjoying it that much, man. So yeah. it was, a, it, it was amazing. And, um, and, uh, just, and our, our group of people was so great because, you know, it wasn't like, you know, some shows you hear about, you know, the beefs and the hostilities mm -hmm. and all that, but we would work 10 hours a day and then go hang out for five more hours at night, show back up in the morning. We never got enough of each other and had a good time, man. But it was it was a great time. Absolutely amazing, man. And again, like I look back and 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 I and I and I, I really, really understand what a blessing and how dope it was. Man, why did the show end, dude? Because I felt that energy watching it week after week. It was like, they look like real friends and they're having fun. Yeah. Right. I think, well, Eve did an interview recently to where she basically stated it was because, you know, she wasn't doing shit she was supposed to do. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? So at the time, they were just like, what did they say? You know, it was the merger when... The uh, or UPN became, mm -hmm. you know, the WWE or the CW or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And so, you know, most shows left. I think even, um, what was it? Uh, Dwayne's name show that came on right after us. I forget oh, uh, the name. All of us. All of us. And that was, you know, Will Smith's show. Mm -hmm. And they had canceled that too. And I think on the day of the upfronts, Will called them and said, ah, no, we won't be doing that. <laughs> and they said, ah, nope. We won't be doing that. And so they kept them because Big <laughs> Willie called. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he didn't make the call for us, but yeah. <laughs> you know, hey. Um uh so so it just sort of, you know, what we got is what, you know, they're going through changes and they're, you know, they're not pushing forward. But Eve recently went on an interview and said, you know, she admitted that show ended because of her and she wasn't on top of her shit. And oh. it was at a time where she was into, you know, partying and having a good time. And she didn't take it um, as serious as maybe she should have. You know, she was, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, not promoting the show like they would ask mm -hmm. her to, showing up late, so on and so forth. You know, words from her mouth. And uh, mm -hmm. she feels like that strongly led to them just ending it. But mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was a good time. It definitely ended too soon. And uh yeah. You know, but but no complaints from me, man. Now, give me so I'm one of the because, first of all, I don't have enough time to go through your entire resume, which is a good problem. I'm just going <laughs> to take moments. So three strikes. David Allen Greer, you first of all, you assembled like the Justice League of comedy. At the, th that was the first time that was the first movie I saw Monique in. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, it was her first movie, I think. How do you... Okay, man. First of all, how do you go about casting your movies? What is... 
first, how do you go about casting movies? And then tell me what was, give me some funny moments from set, bro. Cause I know that they exist and I know I would not find them on a bonus footage on a DVD. Yeah. yeah well, well, first, well, like, but DJ Pooh was the quarterback of three uh -huh. strikes. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, Pooh co-wrote Friday and he directed and, uh, wrote three strikes as well. Um, and so it was just that, you know, Epps was in there. He had a cameo in the, in the, in the barbershop, Monique, um, you know, shoot big boy from the radio yeah. station. It was, it was so many folks in that man. And it was just, uh, it was a blast because mm -hmm. I was, I was, man, I, I was probably the, you know, I wasn't new, but I was new as far as, you know what I mean? Kind of, sort of. And, and it was just a blast. I think the biggest thing for me was who you won't know, but it was Cliff. And, and Cliff, was, Cliff was our man. He was DJ Booker's friend. And Cliff was, he wasn't overweight, but he was right at the weight to be overweight. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if he drunk a lot of water that day, boom, he fell on the overweight side. But he, he, it was a day when we were doing all that running, and and it was, and it was in Long Beach. We ran, ran, ran all day, <laughs> and then, and then, and, then cool. and then when we was walking, I went. We had rap. I was coming out the trailer. It took me a minute to get my stuff together. At that point, and I'm walking out, and the ambulance are here, the fire department are here, and yo, I think it was one of those days when he was over the overweight line. Yo, they had my man with the gas mask giving me oxygen. And it, and if you know Cliff, it was just the funniest thing because he was more worried about us bagging on him the next day than he was saving his life at that point. He was like, they see. They see it's me. They see it's me, man. But David Allen Greer, Melanie Camacho, you know, yes. every day, every day it was something new. Faison. It, it, you know, it was always, it was always crazy, man. We had a, we had a blast, man. We had a Dude, blast. Hearing this is so funny because it's like, <clears throat> these are the moments that we don't get a chance to hear about because, you know, uh, for lack of better words, mainstream media will only cover in sync. We right. have to do the new edition story. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So right. it's like right. hearing this is so is so perfect because it's like, oh man, I always wanted to know what was this like or what was that like? And you, I do want to blame you for one thing. You mm. destroyed my, you just, you made me think something that wasn't real. I, well, like I told you, when I saw you on the Parkers, I saw you on one episode of the Parkers and that mm. weekend you were starring in a movie. This is why <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was this boom, boom, right? I, I, cool, right? <laughs> Bro, I right, thought yeah. the first time I got a guest star appearance in a sitcom, I was like, oh, bet this weekend, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody go hit me. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> no such thing. Yeah, it's no such thing. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yo. And the journey is so real. It's like seeing your path, man, coming from where you come from down here, making it happen on your own is so inspirational. It's It begs the question. You say nothing is ever going to be perfect. After you learned your formula and start creating your films, which film would you say after you finish? You like, okay, I got my legs. Now we're solid. Like no more rookie mistakes. This is a will oil machine. What film did you get it right on or start to get mm. it right on? I think actually um, laugh into the bank mm. and, and, and more, more recently Adam and Eve, because you're always working and you're always working and there's so many other elements. And the biggest variable is people. You know, people, you know, a lot of people always say, you know, Hollywood is, you know, the movie business is shady, it's risky. It's not risky. It's not, it's the people mm -hmm. who you're involved with are risky. The actual business of it is solid. Do this, yeah. do that, make this. That's solid. But it's these variables of people who you bring in who are not solid who are risky, who are shady, who sort of jumble that up. Mm -hmm. And so it took a while to even figure that out. You know what I mean? Um, and you have to be really careful about who you surround with and, and, and who you're moving with, because it doesn't matter how good a 
film and how well it's executed. If the people are wrong, the business get messed up. It's, you know, it, it, it's a no go. Right. But I, I would say now, man, really, you know, now, because I, t- I paused for a little bit to really figure it out because as well as I'm a creative, I'm a businessman as well. And so I'm very calculated about what I do and how I do it. And so this film I just finished uh, called Adam and Eve, which is, um, you know, best is a love story, straight drama. And uh, it's best uh, compared to Jason's lyric. You remember that with Jada Pinkett and Bokeem Woodbine? Yes. It's sort of that same feel. And and now I really have, um, I, I really have the process down and like, I'm better than everybody at this point. Mm. <laughs> hey, that's real. It's like it's you it added <laughs> your 10,000 hours, you put the time <laughs> in, yeah. you literally learn from your mistake. Like that's yeah. that's a yeah. real humble flex. Like it's yeah. real, man. Yeah, it, um, you know, it just is what it is. And, it, and it's not because I'm so super whatever, but it's just mm-hmm. those 10,000 hours, like you said, trial and error, making those mistakes and knowing, you know, making some twice and knowing not to do that no more to where, a lot of the, all the fat is off and it's just yeah. lean work, man. Yep. What is coming up, man? Um, what is coming up immediately? Cause when I hit the IMDb, I'm like, you got five movies coming out. Like brother, <laughs> I thought we was all, thought the world ended. You're like, nah, 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 I'm back to work. Yeah. So no, what is yeah. coming up? <laughs> Uh, Adam and Eve, uh, you know, a lot of stuff isn't even on there. Adam and Eve is on there and that's, 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 whew, that one's man. That one's really, that's, that's really going to shock you guys. I'm then about to do, um, you know, uh, Fat Beach. I'm about to redo that. And um, Three Strikes. Uh, we finally about to up that. And, what? Um, you Wait, wait a minute. I, you can't just gloss over that. Like, you didn't yeah. just say two classics yeah. weren't about to be touched. You about yeah. to do Fat Beach and Three Word. Strikes? Word. Rob is about to be up for parole. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. And, uh, you know, the show I've been working over there with uh, Bentley and your man, my man, Chaz. And so um, that's going to be super dope. That's going to be super dope, man. And then the biggest thing, man, it's like I took my launch, my new company, left the bang entertainment. Mm -hmm. And and it's basically entertainment focused on creating a positive social impact. So everything I do Mm -hmm. from here moving forward, I'll make sure somehow, some way it pushes the world forward and the way we do it personally is reaching back into these inner city and allowing these uh you know inner city youth to be a part of filmmaking and be around real movies and real stars and talk Mm -hmm. to real mentors uh, that they can know see and touch and um just giving them another option because oftentimes they forced to choose between bad and worse and so we want to be that third option they could choose and sort of teach them the skills, knowledge, and expertise that allow them to, um, you know, sort of, you know, learn a trade and Mm -hmm. be able to take care of themselves and their families. Because oftentimes, you know, you give a kid a choice to choose between shooting a gun and shooting a movie, they're going to choose shooting a movie every time. And so um, if I'm going to be making these movies, you know, I'm at the age now to where, you know, it it needs to have more of a meeting other than me just trying to be as funny as I can. Mm. That's man, that's bars, dude. That first of all, nobody could believe that you even age. I don't know what you're not eating and what you're eating because, brother, you're forever 27. I don't know how you do it, but you're doing your thing, <laughs> man. Forever 27, <laughs> dude. I can't thank you enough, man. Thank you for giving me your time today. Thank you for coming through and talking. When you get a chance, come back, rewatch, see some of the love and the comments that they're showing you. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Hooks. Anything you want to say before you get out of here, man? Nah, man. I just appreciate you. Thanks for having me on, man. And uh, I see what you're doing, man. And and it's clear where you're going, man. And uh, if ever you make a film, man, make sure you holler at me, man. So, you know, oh, I can, for uh, sure. You know what I mean? For yeah, sure. man. I, I've literally been saying to myself for like the past three years, I'm like, all right. I got to do the movie because, you know, of course they asked yeah. them like, yo, you going to do a movie. I'm like, I'm going to do the movie. And the right. <laughs> only person I can reach out to is you to not only be in it, but to tell me what to do. <laughs> you yeah, are yeah. a master of your craft, man. So it would definitely yeah. be an honor, brother. Yeah. It's time for you to go and push forward. Stop talking about it and do it. Exactly. And I got that from yeah. you today, man. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Hooks. All oh, right. 
My guy. All right, we have my musical guest coming right now, ladies and gentlemen. If you watched the CT Singing Showcase this past Sunday, you know that this brother walked away with over a thousand dollars from everybody in these comments who was showing love and helped him get to the final stage. And it was some steep competition. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce to you today's musical guest, a brother I am an incredibly large fan of, Mr. Xavion Bows. Good brother. Good brother, Xavion. You're frozen. It looks like a uh, profile picture. Oh. I... Your internet connection is not uh, doing you well, good brother. Boom, 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 boom. Here, Xavier, I click out and click back in while you are doing that. Here, yeah, just hit that, come back in with the link. Make sure you come through from the book. And uh, Natalie Nuss, I appreciate you, man. Shout out to Natalie Nuss, one of the greatest artists of our time, y'all. You are definitely in for a treat if you go to this brother's page. He's self-taught. He's incredible. Xavion's coming back. I got to make sure he's good. Uh, CT giving flowers. That's what's up. You got to do it. You got to show love, man. One thing uh, my mother always told me growing up, we would watch movies and we would watch like black films and stuff. And she'd be like, look, this person reached back and got this person or this person. You know, you always want to show love to people while they can hear it. You don't want to wait until they go on and start telling people how much they meant to you. So I've always held that. And I've always made sure that I've told people how I felt about them while they were there. Attempt number two. He's back and yeah. better than before. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good, man. Ladies and gentlemen, show your love. For Mr. Xavion Bows. You can't win. You can't break even. Now you can't get out of the game. People keep saying things are going to change, but they look just like they're staying the same. You get in, you way over your head, and you only got yourself to blame. But you can win, child. You can't break even. You can't get out of the game. You can win. You can't win no way if your story stays the same. You ain't winning, no, no. I'm glad to see you. I'm awfully glad you came. Better cool it. It ain't about losing when the world has got no shame. Say you can win, child. No, you can't win. Say you can win, child. No, you can't win. Say you can win, child. You can't win. You can't win, child. Girl, you can't win, child. You can't break even. You can't get out of the game. You can't get out of the game. So you can't get out Woo. of the game. Oh, no. I'm in you. Oh. What else to do? Cause with every kiss and every hug, you make me fall in love. And now I, I know I can't be the only one. I bet his heart's all over the world tonight with the love of the life who feel what I feel when I'm with you, with you, with you, with you, with you, girl. With you, with you, with you, with you, with you. Oh, girl, say so I don't want nobody else without you. There's no one left, and you like Jordan's on Saturday. I gotta have you, and I, I cannot wait now. Hey, little shorty, you speak care for me. You know I care for you. You know that I'll be true. You know that I won't lie. You know that I will try to be your everything. Cause if I got you, I don't need money. I don't need cars, girl, you're my all. And oh, I'm into you, and girl, no one else would do. Cause with every kiss and every hug, you make me fall up. And now I, I know I can't be the only one. I know this heart's all over the world tonight. With the love of the life, who feel what I feel when I'm with you, with you, with you, with you, with you. Girl, with you, with you, with you, with you, with you. And I will 
never tried to deny that you were my whole life, cause if you ever let me go, I would die. So I won't front, I don't need another woman. I just need you all or nothing. Cause if I got that, then I'll be straight. Baby, you're the best part of my days, girl. Oh, I gotta see you, boo, and the hearts all over the world tonight. Said there's hearts all over the world. Woo, woo, they say they need it. I said his heart's all over the world tonight. Said his heart's all over the world tonight. Oh, I'm into you, and girl, no one else would do. Cause with every kiss and every hug, you make me fall in love. And now I, I know I can't be the only one. I bet his heart's all over the world tonight. Be the love of that life to feel what I feel when I'm with you, with you, with you, woo, woo, woo. Girl, see with you, with you, with you. <laughs> see with you, 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 you. See you, you, you. See it only with you, you, with you, with you. Hey, yeah. All right, so this last one is original by uh, me. It's called Dirty Diana. It's based off of my favorite artist, Michael. All right, so um, you used to be the love. I will waver in time Turning all these women down Because I thought you were mine Oh, it's something about your touch That makes me go crazy Yeah When we make love to the moon It really was amazing Yeah now you're tricking my mind, wasting my time Talking to these brothers, know you out of line Ain't about the independent, independent. If you really want to mess up, I can cross the line Telling me that you love me But you out here clubbing and creeping I could be your enemy, but baby, you don't want to see me Red lips, smooth skin, long legs Took me in, wanted to be tried by your love Now I see that you the snake Should have never took the bait Have you, there's no air in my lungs Dirty Diana Oh, you cut me off, Dirty Diana. You did me wrong. Red lips, smooth skin, long legs took me in, wanted to be tried by your love, Dirty Diana. <laughs> Dirty Diana. Oh, oh. thank you. My guy, ladies and gentlemen, you see the cash app right there. If you would like to bless my man, Xavion, he's simply phenomenal. It's always an honor, man. If y'all didn't notice, this brother is so dope. Created the beat on his own while singing, which is not even remotely easy to do. The way your brain works has to be like ambidextrous <laughs> to some extent. It's crazy. Man, what city are you in? Uh, St. Louis. Yes, sir. St. Louis. St. Louis. Brother, as you know, this is the only once of a million times that I'll be having you back on the show because I'm a fan. I love to hear your voice. You're so dope. Thank you for blessing us today, man. You are, you're blessed, man. I appreciate you. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my guy, Xavier. Uh, so, I've had an amazing time with y'all today, man. This has been so fun. Autumn's giving you a standing ovation, Xavier. I love it. Sequoia showing love. Sequoia will be singing on next week's show. Um, and I also have very special guest that I am going to announce next week on my pages. If you follow the pages, just follow the pages. You'll see me post about it. The guest is uh is also massive. I like to I like to have guests that we are excited about, man. And this episode has been no different. I'm gonna say this as everybody who's watching me, whether you're watching on Twitch, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, I am saying this on camera. I need help. Okay. I cannot do any of the things that I'm doing without y'all. When I say, hey, y'all, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that follow share. I need the help because these platforms are not going to help me. You guys have to. I get so many messages telling me how much y'all love me and how much you support me and appreciate me. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. If you support me like you say you do, if you love me like you say you do, share everything that I post. 
I cannot beat the algorithm without you guys. I can't have eyes without you guys on these shows. If I'm just wasting my time, then tell me I'm wasting my time and I won't do them anymore. But I cannot succeed without y'all. You have to share this for me. When you see me do the would you rathers, share it, comment multiple times. That's the only way people are going to see the content. All of this content is free. If you would like to go see the paid content, go to the Patreon. It's available. Uh, the Real CT After Dark, the Marriage Go Round podcast with Tangerine and myself, uh, Team CT versus Kingsley Crew, where we debate different things. It's all there. However, all of this stuff is free. All you got to do is share. You say you love me, prove it. I'm off my soapbox. I, hopefully, I don't have to say that again. When you see me post something, share it. I need help. I'm not one of these guys that is a, is a household name. You see the million followers, but you also see that algorithm try to play me. Share everything I post. I can't do it without you. Other than that, guys, I'm so grateful that you guys tuned into the show today. I will be back on probably Wednesday to do Love, Lust, and Lies. Monday, another episode of Would You Rather comes out as we get close to the finale. Um, if you haven't watched already, go back and watch Would You Rathers. Uh, the numbers are going to decide if we do a season two. Uh, everybody who watches the show say that you enjoy it, so I appreciate you. Um, so that is Monday. Wednesday, I will be doing Love, Lust, and Lies. Next Friday, another CT After Dark with my very special guest and musical guest, Sequoia. Um, Tuesday, you can catch Tangerine's Top Talent. Thursday, you can catch Shoot Your Shot. Uh, you could also catch Wednesday Lover with BT Kingsley. You can hear him talking about his, his uh, relationship talk on Fridays on YouTube at 5 o'clock. You also can check out Gimme 5. We're out here. We're creating this content. All we need you to do is digest it and support us. You say you love my work. I appreciate that, Herman. Hopefully, you share everything that I do. It's so easy to hit that share button. Uh, Van Beer, we got to behind each other. Just share. Thank you so much, Van Beer. I appreciate you. Like Kina said, prove it. I'm straight up. We always say, hey, how come did nobody say nothing? I'm saying it to you right now. I need your help. As clear as I can possibly say it. Help support me. And we can do this thing together. I have plans. The plans can go massively successful as long as you guys help me. Before uh, Facebook shut your boy down, we had a hundred and something thousand people watching the CT Singing Showcase, which the thousands of people who are watching this past Sunday is also a blessing. But I'm telling you, because people are sharing the content, I'm going to do my job to create the content for y'all. All I need you to do is share it, interact with it repost the stuff y'all so thank you so much for watching i appreciate the love i will see you guys with a new video coming and uh we're gonna have some fun but i'm about to do the after party on twitch at four o'clock so if you want to come and discuss today's show we're gonna have a great time i'm about to go to twitch right now twitch.tv let me put it in the chat because i know people don't people don't be reading man. you know what people don't be doing reading so this is the Twitch. You're watching on Facebook, that's the Twitch for the Facebook. You're watching on YouTube, that's the that's the Twitch for the YouTube. You're watching on Twitch, that's the Twitch for the Twitch. Now, after party going down right now, four o'clock. That means seven minutes. Go pee, go get you a little snack, come in there. Uh, I'm about to be playing Avengers. We're going to have a good little time. We're going to kick it. We're going to laugh a little bit. And then we are going to talk about the show. So come over and kick it and have a good time with us. Other than that, God bless everybody who's watched this, man. I appreciate the people who support me no matter what. You guys have been in here showing love. I am honored and I am extremely grateful. So you guys have an incredible day. Team CT all day. You already